Now, do you constantly find yourself borrowing? And the reason why you're borrowing, you're not even borrowing to invest, you're borrowing to fund your consumables. Like, for example, let me give a very simple example. Like, you're borrowing for you to buy food to eat, or maybe you're borrowing to pay the school fees, or maybe you're borrowing to actually pay your rent. You know what? All those are consumables. What are consumables? Let me just write them down for you to understand. Consumables are things that do not generate anything, okay? You just buy and whatever you consume them, they are purposely free. They are purposely for what? Sustainabilities, okay? Just to sustain you. Okay, now the question is, you actually constantly find yourself in this kind of a thing. And by the way, I know those guys exist, especially those guys who are employed. You have your monthly salary. You find yourself having like 10 apps that you've borrowed. You have the loans from circles. You have loans from banks. You have loans from all over the places to a point whereby the salary that you're getting is not even able to sustain the, the borrows or the sort of, we call them the loans or the debts that you have. Guess what? This is the video for you. Now, this is what I wanted to do in this 2024. And guess what? Forget about the borrowing. And if you have to, then it has to be on the purposes of investment. Again, I'm not discouraging people not to borrow. Borrowing is not bad, but if you're borrowing to actually invest to generate something, but not this kind of a borrowing, okay? I'm going to share with you some of the bad debts. For example, you say you want to buy a piece of land, okay? And then you have a salary, and then you acquire that piece of land. Let's say the piece of land is goes for a million bob, okay? Now, you get that piece of land, and then say you pay like... Uh, 20% of it or 30% of it. So meaning that you pay like 300K and then you're remaining with 700 to service and then you're told you're going to service that for the next four years. And then actually the money that you're using to service that piece of land, you're actually getting it from you being employed. You know where the problem is? Is that that piece of land that you bought does not generate anything. It's not a capital. It's not a cash generating asset. You people, let's 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 understand this because there is a difference. There is an asset that generating cash, meaning it's a, it's a cash flow asset. It's an asset that generating some cash, and that is the first principle of taking money. For example, you take money, you invest on something. And that piece of land, maybe you're doing some value addition one to three. It is generating something. Then it helps. It is helping you to repay back the loan. You get what I'm saying? But this issue of just having this you dream of, hey, I just want to one day acquire land, I want to build, and all those kind of things, then you take a loan against your salary, that's uncalled for. I had somebody who was being paid 45000 he bought a piece of land where you're supposed to pay 22000 at the end of the month, you're remaining with 23000 You have to eat, you have to drink, you have to pay school fees for your kids and all those kind of things. The guy was training. And the piece of land the guy bought is like far away, I don't know where. You're not even doing farming, you're doing nothing. Now, listen. All those are brought by what we call the financial illiteracy. Are both brought, are brought by what we call the financial illiteracy. Financial illiteracy, okay? This financial illiteracy, I also had a case, by the way, you know, somebody taking a loan to build a house that you have not even calculated how much it will cost. You build a house or you start the foundation and then the money is finished. That house is not generating anything. It's not even a rental house. It's actually a residential house. The next minute you're actually straying. You know what's it being doing all that? Is actually the financial literacy. Now, what exactly can you be able to do? So, how what do you do for you to never borrow again in this year 2024? Number one, number one, and I will never cease to remind you this, and I'm going to remind you again, okay? It is called understanding your numbers. Understanding, understanding your numbers, understanding your numbers, okay? The reason as to why you're actually borrowing it is because the numbers that you're having in terms of your income, it is not enough. For example, you say, hey, here is the income, all right, and here are your expenses, now, if you were to compare the two, you find <laughs> you find that the thing is that this income is not equivalent to the expenses. Now, at that particular point, guess what happens? You're required to guess what? Top up your income plus a what? A loan for you to do what? Now to say it is now equivalent to the expenses. At this particular point, guess the kind of a ditch you're getting yourself into? Remember the money that, for example, let me just use real numbers for, for you to understand what I'm talking about. And this is what I want you to avoid to never borrow again in 2024. For example, say you make 30K per month, okay? And then your expenses is actually 35K per month. Now, ask me, now, let me ask a, a very simple question. What exactly will happen in this kind of a case scenario? Why? But probably the reason why you have this kind of a, a lifestyle is because, not, even, not because, you actually are what? You're actually a spender. You have what we call, you're a spendthrift. You have this what we call consumer mindset. Now, at that particular case, guess what happens? The 30K, which is your income, is not equivalent to your expenses. Of which, even if it was equivalent, that's a wrong way to do it. But now, you're actually in a very deep, deep, big, uh, uh, you know, deep ditch. Why? Because you're actually spending more than you're making. In this case scenario, 
you guess what happens? You're gonna ha need to have yourself a what? A 5k loan. A 5k loan for this amount of money now to be equivalent to that. Guess what happens now, okay? This is what happens. Remember one thing, initially the money that you're making is not equivalent to what your expenses are. Therefore, you have to borrow. Then you don't even have the chances of paying this loan back. Why? Because the next month's salary will still be 30,000. So you'll still have a debt of what? 5,000. Guess what happens again? Now, you intend to borrow another person or another institution to actually pay the existing loan and by the time you realize you still can't even pay the first two so what happens you borrow again and again and again and without you even knowing you actually get yourself in an entanglement all this is being brought by what the spendthrift mentality consumer mentality you just want to make it to make yourself happy with a 30,000 salary regardless of what's happening and instead of this salary to actually cater for your basic needs this is what I always advise people. Why? We have, there are three types of cash flow, okay? There are three types of cash flow. Three types of what? Cash flow. Cash flow. For example, if you make 30, all right, and you consume your entire 30 amount of money that at the end of the month, guess what you have? This cash flow type number one, you have zero of it. That is actually identity. You have zero cash flow, all right? So if you make 30, guess what? And now you consume 20, guess what? You have a what? A positive cash flow all right so say you make 30 right you consume 35 like an example was giving above here guess what number how happens you have a negative cash flow all right do you see what is happening here so you have to understand which kind of a lifestyle are you living in and remember one thing a lot of people tend to advise you to live in those hey if you're making 30,000 kind of money then you have to supposed to live on 30,000 lifestyle no that's a scam you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to live below your means. There are only two ways on how you can increase your money. And I've been talking about this. Allow me to repeat. A, it's either you live below your means. You live, live below your means. That is meaning if you're making 30, you live at 20,000. So that you can have a 10,000 that you can invest. Or two, you find a way of making an extra income. Make more money. Make more money. Make more money. I know most of the motivational speakers, they tell you, hey, make more money, don't save money, make more money, you're saving money, the government are printing. It is true, but let's deal with the practicability of that. How do you do that? How, For example, you know, for example, say you are employed, you are a teacher, you are whatever you are, and I don't know why I love using examples of teachers. I don't have any problem with the teachers, okay? They tell you, don't save money, make more money. Now, now, let's be logical. You know, there's a difference between what is in the book and the reality on the ground. Now, how do you make more money if you're a teacher? You're employed from 8 a.m. all the way to 5 p.m. Unless maybe you start a business at the evening. Some people even are employed all the way from 6 to 6. You don't have any even extra time because you need to rest. You're a human being. Now, what do you do? So the only way you can actually achieve this make more money, it's first of all by having yourself the financial discipline. Because you can even make more money and using the entire amount of money. At the end of the day, it will be like you're making nothing. So, one thing you're supposed to know that I know it works for sure. It is actually living below your means. If you make 30, live at 20,000 lifestyle. Get the 10. 10, you invest it. Once you invest it or you save it for the purposes of raising the capital to invest it in future. So, now, in that particular point now, that's that money that you're actually accumulating. You get the capital. Now, you can invest it in future. Now, after you investing in in future, guess what happens? You've created another source of income. Now, you have the active income that you have, and now you have what? The passive income that you're getting out there. That can only be solved by doing what? Living below your means. And this is the only way that you cannot get yourself into borrowing. Especially borrowing to actually fund your consumables. And this year, 2024, I want you to do something, okay? Go check your numbers. Go check what you direct towards your rent. Go check that what you direct towards your school fees, the black tax, the entertainment, the clothing, the utilities, all those kind of things, the transport. Go and ask yourself, okay, fine. What if I was to adjust myself a little bit? Will I be able to salvage something little? Yes or no? And obviously, yes, it has to. You remember one thing, and I love giving these examples because most of the people can relate to it. You remember that time you're being paid like way less amount of money, probably 10 times lesser than what you're getting today? You are surviving. You actually added, you're still surviving. You're still, where you are right now, you're actually surviving and you're complaining at the same time. You know, sometimes when I receive calls from clients, somebody is earning close to 200,000 Kenyan shillings in Kenya. That is over $2,000. 
well, obviously, you know, that's a lot of money in Africa, you know. Maybe if you're watching this from a developed country, you're like, 2,000 in a month, that's way less. Well, in here, it's actually, by the way, going by the statistics of Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, they say, hey, those people who are earning over 100,000 per month in Kenya, they fall under the categories of 1%. Most of the Kenyans earn uh, an average salary of from 15,000 all the way to 60,000, with all the due respect to those who earn below 10,000, because they are there. So the reality is, you have to really go ahead and check your numbers. That's where the problem is. You know why? Because there is an increment of your salary and then you increase how you, expend, you, 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 know, you spend your money. And that's why you don't even realize there is an increment. And let me tell you one secret. Money or income or salary that usually be paid at the end of the month, day or week, it was just a substitution of what the slaves used to be given back then. The whole idea was them to eat, drink and dress. So people said, hey, slaves don't work better than those people who are free. And they say, oh, okay, fine. So instead of us paying for your food, you know, for your food rent and actually clothing, how about we pay you and do it by yourself? And then they gave you equivalent to what they used to give you back then when you were in a slavery. So if you don't understand that concept of what is a salary, what is an income, you, you always lose it. You know, they pay you that enough money that you can actually cater for all the three, three things. And once they cater for those three things, that's so that you can come back again and again and again and again and again. And once you reach a certain particular age, they tell you you are no longer productive. They tell you you are retired. We no longer need you. But when they are employing you, they told you we, have an, we need a person with, more, with a lot of years in experience. Now they've reached a certain particular point. I thought the more you grow old, the more you should be productive to them. But it becomes otherwise. Because when you are applying for a job, you just graduated from university, they tell you we need, we need a somebody who is five years experience. Then if they are going for that, then it means if somebody comes here with a 70 year experience in that job, then they ought to be employed and being paid better. But they tell you no. You are no longer productive. Now we need some... You see, if, if you understand the whole concept of what is going on out there, my friend, you'll be very, very cautious and careful. Because that is exactly what is happening out there. So what I can advise you to do is this. Check your numbers. The money that you get paid at the end of the month if you're employed is meant to cater for your basic needs. So once you cater for your basic needs, the rest of the money channel it towards employment. Nobody employs you to be wealthy. <laughs> I repeat, nobody employs you to be wealthy. That's for sure. They employ you. And if you want to know this, yeah, dare do this. But try this at your own risk. This is not an advice. I'm just saying it out there. Go tell your boss that you bought something and you're actually investing. Probably you even last, you won't even last for one month in that location. They will fire you. It is true. Because now you're becoming... But then, have you realized one thing? Once you become financially free, you become very hard to be controlled. But when you actually are needy individual, people can control you the way they want. That's very true. I had a lady who called me and told me, Hey, Joseph, I thought I was doing a good thing. I shared my good news with my boss. I told him, Hey, guess what? I just bought a piece of land and I'm looking forward to setting some rentals out there. I didn't even last for a one month in that job. True? Why? Because now they realize now you're getting off their grip. They can no longer control you. You're becoming financially free. And, 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 that's, the, and that's the thing that I've actually been, you know, tried to sort of, you know, be pressed such a way that you cannot even realize it. And guess what? The moment you get yourself in these murky waters, you're borrowing all over the place. And the reason why you're borrowing, you're actually funding the consumables. You're going to get yourself in murky waters. And let me tell you one secret. Sometimes I tend to think like the wealthy people are the ones who benefit from the loans that they get from the bank. For example, let's say here we have a person A. Okay, we have person A, it's just a teacher who get a pre Again, I don't have any problem with it. I'm just using it as an example. Okay, this is just a teacher who got employed. By the way, in Kenya, if you're a teacher employed by the TSC, there I think the very first salary they give you is, is forty thousand or forty five thousand around there. Say even in forty five thousand. Okay, forty five k. Okay, now here we have a wealthy individual. Now, this wealthy individual, this guy just got employed. Maybe you just spend like one year in your job and then you go get like a loan of maybe let's say two million. Obviously speaking, this two million is not even enough to get your piece of land and build yourself. It's not. And if it has, then you wouldn't really build that dream house or something of sort. And if you were to sort of buy a piece of land in a prime place where you can build the commercial you know, estate where you can actually lease it out, the money is still not enough. You know why they're giving you two million? Based on what you get at the end of the salary. At the end of the month. Now this individual goes to the same bank that you went, but this guy gets like 15 million. Sorry about that. This guy is capable of going buying piece of land with the amount of money and building some rentals out of the place. No, you see what? There is a difference between you and them. Why? You, you actually be servicing this loan using your salary. Why? Because probably you never, you never even grew with financial literacy. You don't, you don't know. You are not supposed to build your own, your own home with this amount of money. 
the, the ultimate dream is not just getting the let me not get there because if i go there you might uh, you know roast me on the comment section and this guy is actually having the 15 million can buy a piece of land and come up with structure so the difference between you and him is that him is not being is not paying the loan using the salary he get paid after all if he's paid actually after all if he's in on a salary but he's getting the amount of money to repay back the loan using the what it's like he's using people's money to actually get wealthy it's true that's the difference so you have to be very, very careful. Otherwise, if you live in this market water, and then probably this guy will be a slave of the lender for the next four or five years because you need to repay that money as low as you can so that you can acquire another money so that you can... And that's why you find these people actually sort of achieve their financial... Some, some don't even achieve it. You live in a paycheck to paycheck life until you retire. And that's the time, hey, you've educated your kids and all those kind of things, but you wonder, how is individual driving a 15 million car? A money that you've never gotten in your life in, at a single seat. You know, those, those are simple questions that you're supposed to ask yourself. If you get yourself a salary and then this is kind of a character that you engage yourself with. Otherwise, if you continue this way, it's going to be very tough and rough for you. Anyway, guys, guess what? That marks the end of my video. But don't forget this. If you're first time watching me, I'm Joseph Talk About Money and Investment. Make sure that you hit that comment. I mean, uh, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. And I know you're asking, what's the importance of that? Yeah, you get to be, you get to be notified whenever I upload a new good video because I do so each and every day. All right? So, by the way, don't forget this. You can as well pick my number from the description of this specific video. Should be a call or a text. I offer those services at a personal level for just a cup of coffee's price. For now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one.